September 2024 was a historic month for St. Lucia as the government achieved significant milestones in key areas such as housing, healthcare, and economic reform. These landmark policies reflect the government's commitment to improving the lives of every St. Lucian. On September 10th, 2024, Parliament approved a 20 million loan guarantee from the National Insurance Corporation to the St. Lucia Development Bank, the SLDB. This funding will provide eligible public servants with 100% loan financing, removing the need for a down payment. Additionally, public servants will receive a $1,000 grant to assist with legal fees and enjoy a waiver of stamp duties on the first 400,000 of their mortgage. Private sector borrowers who qualify can also benefit from this facility, including the stamp duty waiver. This initiative fulfills the commitment made by Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, in his 2024-2025 budget address, where he reaffirmed his dedication to enhancing home ownership opportunities for St. Lucian families. And for more information on this, the public can contact the St. Lucia Development Bank. In the area of healthcare, on September 13th, 2024, the Saudi Fund for Development and the government of St. Lucia signed contracts with two joint ventures involving St. Lucian and Saudi Arabian firms to complete the reconstruction of St. Jude Hospital in Oje V4. This project, funded by a US $75 million concessional loan from the Saudi Fund for Development, is a critical step towards transferring health services from the retrofitted George Audlam Stadium back to St. Jude Hospital, which was destroyed by fire in 2009, 15 years ago. The modernized facility will significantly enhance healthcare delivery, add in 100 beds, and improve the medical services to the nation's healthcare infrastructure. And since we are in the vein of healthcare, on August 23rd, 2024, the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, MHMC, received $11 million from the government of St. Lucia, and this funding was sourced from the Citizenship by Investment Program after a successful meeting with the board of MHMC. The government's donation will significantly reduce MHMC's debt, allowing its board and management to focus on delivering high quality healthcare services to the public. Additionally, the financial relief will enable the complex to invest in critical infrastructure upgrades, enhance staff capacity, and improve patient care. Further talks are in progress to establish a sustainable financial strategy that ensures the Millennium Heights Medical Complex long-term viability and its continued ability to meet the evolving needs of healthcare in the nation. Now moving along, on September 16th, 2024, the new Insolvency Act was introduced by Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre in Parliament. The Act empowers St. Lucians who are facing financial difficulties in negotiating with creditors. Key features of the Act include debt forgiveness. Borrowers can negotiate for partial or complete forgiveness of their debts. Affordable restructuring. The Act establishes a low cost out-of-court process for the debt restructuring, allowing borrowers and creditors to reach mutually beneficial agreements. Creditor intervention. Borrowers are empowered to halt actions taken against them by creditors. And asset protection. 
The Act allows borrowers to pause the sale of their assets while they work to resolve their debts. This legislation aims to modernize the credit sector, balancing the interests of debtors and the creditors, while also aligning with the international financial institutions like the World Bank and the IMF. The National, Competitive, <coughs> sorry. the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, spearheaded the drafting of the insolvency legislation. And moving on to news in the economy. Um, as the economy continues its post-pandemic recovery, real GDP growth is projected to average 5% in 2024, a testament to the government's focus on sustainable development. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, has projected back-to-back -back years of economic growth for St. Lucia. Right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Thank you for being here. Today, I'll use this opportunity to speak a bit about Kudme Soufouye. You may recall that last year, for the first time, we had Kudme Soufouye. And it is all part of Creole Heritage Month. Last year, we did not have it in October. And this year, last year we had it in November. I think the weather impacted it and everything else. But we had a very successful Kudme Soufouye last year. And I want to tell you that again this year we've decided to have it on the third, the first Sunday in November. We don't want it to clash with, with um, the actual June Keol. So we're having it on the first Sunday in November, which is the third. And again, Kudme Soufouye, what we have done is we've invited all the communities in Soufre to sit as a community, discuss the project that they want in the community. And as a parliamentary rep, as the Soufre Regional Development Foundation and the Soufre Constituency Council, we'll come together to give all the communities the support required to implement or institute that particular community project. We've had different, so far, based on the information I have, we have projects coming in from several, Bouton, Mini, um, Soufret Town, Esperance in Fauchéjac, different places having different projects. I want to take this moment to encourage all our communities to come together. And what we're doing is to build on that cultural heritage of community supporting each other. That's fundamental in everything that we do. That is the basis on which our society has developed. And we have every reason to embrace that culture of Kudme each one helping each other. Communities coming together, supporting, working together to deal with the situation at hand. That's the same concept that you have if you work as a family, to come together, each one supporting each other, come together as a community, come together in organizations, because the, the issue is no man is an island. And what it does, it brings camaraderie. It brings cohesion. So Soufre is leading the way in this area. We've done it last year. We're going to do it this year. Last year, you may see persons coming in, cleaning the cemetery, painting the cemetery walls. We have the churches involved. Last year, the SDA was very instrumental in beautifying certain areas in the community. And we are using that moment to call all of Soufre churches, organizations, individuals, communities, and families if they want to share um, the projects with us. The coordinator, we've had the coordinator, um, and we have the flyer out, is Miss um, Krishna Sanbrice is the coordinator, but you can present your project proposals to my constituency office, 
to the Sufre Regional Development Foundation or the Sufre Constituency Council. I want to take this moment to say it in Creole. Nous en moi Creole. Et puis souffrir l'année passée, nous tenions un coup de main souffrir l'année ça nous avons vu fait. L'année ça là, c'est à ce dimanche le 3 novembre. Et puis nous avons créé toute commune en souffrir pour assis ensemble décider qui pour gérer au Kenya en communion et puis pour voyer et formation ça là um, by uh, constituency office moi et ben uh, foundation là et ben uh, uh, council là pour nous venir ça moi ça nous ni dernier meeting pour nous faire décision à associer pour j'ai à mec pedi au soir that is wednesday night um, so moi voulais encourager tout le monde tous ces jeunes monde là aussi vini ensemble pour pour ça faire différents projets ou ça aider à ranger en caïba en en grand citoyen ou ça décider pour planter fleurs au moins en place pour nettoyer en côté mais vini ensemble yon on ka supporter l'autre euh la main à la main ça c'est un bagage nous ja continuer faire depuis nous savent depuis ayel nous grand maman nous grand papa nous c'est comme ça yo supporter yon a l'autre à nous continuer en même manière ça là pour nous supporter yon a l'autre c'est comme ça nous ça pour gouer comme en nation Yes, you are correct that um Fonchejac dashin is now being exported. I do not have the details in terms of how many pounds of dashin was actually exported, but what I can do is to remind you of the genesis of that project. The dashin project started just over a year ago when I visited I was part of a delegation with um Export St. Lucia. We visited, we did we went on a trade mission to we went through to the British Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix, uh, BVI, and we recognized that there was a huge market for Dachin. And based on my knowledge of Dachin and Fonchejac, because Fonchejac is synonymous with Dachin production, so I went back and worked with the farmers there, provided just about 51 farmers, $1,500 each to help them with the production, we also partnered with the Ministry of Agriculture. That was fundamental. The minister came on board. You would have seen we did that on, we met with the farmers at least two, three occasions. Um, and that is what you see now. And we gave them the, the monies, persons cultivated the fields, and now we are seeing that this dashing is now ready for harvesting. You may recall that just over a month ago, we had a dashing festival in Fonchejac where we were encouraging persons to use the dashing in different ways, um, how to cook it differently. Um, the Taiwanese showed us how to use dashing in, in the sweets and the desserts that we've never used before. Um, we had see people in Fochejac going into processing dashing in terms of dashing wines and things like that. All we are saying is we are now putting dashing as a premium product, agricultural product. And we are doing value added, but we are also targeting the export market. So, yes, the first set of export started. Uh, I believe that Export St. Lucia, based on the conversation I've had with them, is um, in conversation with the Farmers Association in Fochejac so that we start getting the data. I've always um, asked the extension officer to have the data that is important. What was um, when it? What was um, harvested? What was cultivated at the beginning? What is being harvested? What is sold locally versus what is exported? What portion of that is going into value added? I think that data is important for us as we move forward. But what what I was happy to see um, within well while, while we had the 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 dashing festival, we had a competition for the largest dashing. And again, the person who won at the time, somebody won, 
But after the prizes were given, persons came with much larger dashings. So he's just telling us, and, and, and I remember saying the week before that, actually, um, I saw and somebody presented me with a dashing that was over a foot long. Yeah, huge dashings. So we are making some progress. And again, we are in the right direction. We have bananas in some cases, but in Soufre, we have our Fonchejac farmers focusing on dashing cultivation. Also, what we have done, we are working with Bellevue Farmer Cooperative, and there we are working with vegetable farmers. Again, we, are, we have embraced the work to ensure that our farmers get the support that they need. It's a good question in terms of the irrigation, but generally I need to tell you the climatic conditions is in Fonchejac is one that is very good for the dashing production. But the, the farmers, yes, have, they've raised the issue of support in irrigation, and I know that the Minister of Agriculture um, is working with his technical team to look at a project to try to bring irrigation to the Fosha-Jacques farmers. Well, That's just, it. Yes? Just, uh, just give me the latest update with the marijuana um, and where we are right now, because I haven't been there anything about it. Can you just give us a little update? OK. Thank you, Jerry. The whole issue of cannabis, yes, um, for cannabis specifically, what we have now, we have a draft bill. We have a draft bill, a final one. Um, we believe that if within the next two months we will open it out for public consumption and conversation, and maybe by the ending of the year we will present it to the parliament. We really feel we need, because of the nature of cannabis and the subject matter, we are giving birth to a new industry, that we need to have that conversation in the whole national space. So that's where we are, but we have a draft bill. But the other works that we've done as it relates to the whole issue of cannabis, you may recall that I came to Parliament a few months ago with what you call the um, RSA, which is a structure to take care of all substance, um, regulated substances. And that would include cannabis, that would, that would include alcohol, and a lot of other substances that we think needs regulation. So that structure is in place. Um, pretty soon, I know that there is a board, there's a specialized board now, and I know there was a interview for a CEO and a secretary that took place about a week ago. So within the next two weeks, you will have the appointment of the CEO of the RSA, the Regulated Substance Authority, as well as putting the staffing in place so that you could see the actual rollout of the cannabis industry. Well, I do not have the details, but what I would really like to say is I am pleased that we're able to maintain that export market. But to even our own local market, we, we need to do a lot more production for bananas. We need to do a lot more production. And when I drive around, sometimes there are a lot of fields that I believe uh, that I see are neglected and needs um, a lot more management. So I want to encourage our farmers the government is providing support, farm labor support. Government is also providing fertilizer in terms of a support mechanism. So I'd really like to encourage our farmers to take advantage of the markets that we have at the moment for bananas and for other agricultural crops. Right. Um, it's good that you asked about our fishermen. You know our fishermen, especially our fishers from Soufre, were affected by... Uh, uh, bad weather sometime in February. And we had at least 10 of our fishers got their boats damaged in February. And again, with Hurricane Beryl, um, quite a few of our fishers got their vessels damaged. At present, we have 
two sets for Hurricane Beryl. We had two sets. We had those fishes that were registered that got damaged, and then we have those that were not registered. Based on the conversation we've had with the Honorable Prime Minister, we are going to, to support, provide some support to all registered fishers. So at the moment, we have a call out for the unregistered fishers to get themselves registered. That's important. That's a call for all unregistered fishers, especially in the super area, to get themselves registered. So the fisheries officer is on the ground now trying to ensure that this happens because we really want to um, provide some compensation to all the fishers within the next two weeks, God willing. Well, um, to me, we had about maybe 50-something fishers that got affected, and almost 50% was registered and unregistered. So we are calling on those that are unregistered to make sure they are registered within the next two weeks so that we, when the prime minister writes this check, that they are included and to receive some form of compensation. Also, we, we are working on trying to see how we can also assist those persons that were affected in February.